Okay, welcome back. This is video two, lecture one, and we are looking at a couple of examples to better understand the problem setup in machine learning. Now we understand that there are many such applications where machine learning has been implemented and the results have been quite uh, impressive. One of them is the famous Netflix problem. So I don't know if you remember this or not. This was back in, I think, 2009, uh, when Netflix uh, was offering a prize of uh, around $1 million to anyone who could improve their recommendations by just like 10%. Because there is a lot of money involved when Netflix recommends movies and a person likes or dislikes a particular movie because their entire idea of subscription depends on that, right? So this is an important problem. Let's try to understand what the problem is and how can machine learning come into picture. Uh, okay, so here it is. This is the problem set up. Now, um, viewers rate movies, right? The main difficulty or the major obstacle in this problem is that the criteria that view, like the viewers or the users use is quite complex, right? I don't know how a certain person XYZ is going to rate a particular movie. I don't know the user selection process because there is this like entire cognitive uh, science and other theories and, and other areas that really like study that in depth and it is found that user behavior and user selection and rejection is quite complex. Now, trying to model those explicitly is not an easy task, right? So it, it may not be possible for us to come up with an analytical solution. So basically what I'm saying is that I cannot come up with a formula to uh, that applies to everyone uh, and that can correctly tell me that this particular user is going to like this particular movie, right? But we know that we have historical data. Basically, let's say there is a viewer and we know some things about them, like their behavior in terms of how they've rated previous movies, how they've watched some movies. And using that, we can do something. Basically, using that, we can come up with something that's known as an empirical solution, right? Not an analytical solution, but an empirical solution. So how does that work? Okay, so let's try to understand that. This figure here, it, it's kind of... Uh, illustrating one approach that was used in the million dollar competition and let's let's try to understand how this works so basically what we do is for any viewer let's say viewer one we will we will try to uh, find certain attributes or factors based on their historical watching or liking or disliking of a movie right so what are these attributes it's up to us as machine learning experts or people who are trying to find a solution to this problem to describe each viewer as a as an attribute as a, as a vector of attributes i would say right so these attributes are nothing but these factors like how much the the, the viewer likes comedy do they prefer simple plots complicated plots um, the lead actor and so on right so i can have like a viewer let's say v1 be represented as a vector of all these uh, attributes or factors, factor one, factor two, and so on, like factor n, right? So this is uh, representing a viewer in my uh, problem. Okay, so once I've created like a viewer or a user profile, I will also create a similar profile for movies, right? So every movie will also be described. Let's say movie one is described as a set of some factors, uh, again, uh, factor one, factor two, and so on to factor n, right? So once I've created these like vectors for, for movies and for actors, I can do some sort of matching here, right? If I take like thousands or like not thousands, at least hundreds of these factors that describe a movie's content and that describe uh, describes a viewer's taste, I can match these factors. And once I have like a matching outcome of these factors, that could be a good predictor of how the viewer will rate the movie, right? For instance, like one way could be, and this is just like one way, there could be multiple ways of doing it. I can assign numbers to these to represent how important each of these factors is to a particular viewer, right? right? So for example, for viewer one, let's say the, the likes comedy has a, a, a value two, and we can have like some systematic way of coming up with this, the, like these values. I'm not going into too much de detail of that, but yes, we can have that. Right, and let's say they like action a lot. So let's say the, the value is higher in magnitude and so on. And similarly for, for any movie, for, for every movie, I'll have like values for these as well, right? So based on uh, when a new movie comes in, I will have like these attributes for that particular movie. And based on the values for each of these attributes or each of these factors, I can match this movie to my user, right? 
And so what will happen here is that uh, without explicitly analyzing the movie content or viewer taste here, as you can tell by just like the problem setup, my learning algorithm, which is nothing but the sequence of steps that I'll follow to kind of predict a rating, right? Basically, I'll come up with the contribution from each factor for a movie and try to match them. So that's what this like picture is showing. Uh, for example, here, if the viewer does not like comedy as much, their value is two. And this movie has a huge like comedy content. So the value is five. I might not recommend this to this viewer. Rather, I'll come up with some other movie, movie two, that has like a high action content and then I'll, I can recommend that to the to the viewer. So how am I coming up with all this? Basically my learning algorithm is reverse engineering these factors and then the, like the, this entire reverse engineering is based on previous ratings, right? It's based on like historical data of the, the viewer and I'm coming up with an empirical solution that I talked about, right? So then this matching it basically takes up random factors tunes these factors to, to make them more and more aligned with how my viewer has rated previous movies until I am able to predict how viewers will rate this movie in general. So basically, I'm, I'm recommending, eventually I'm recommending only those movies that have a higher predicted rating for this particular viewer. Okay, so this kind of gives us an in, intuition about how machine learning in general like solves certain problems. One of them is this famous Netflix problem and how we are able to come up with an empirical solution uh, as opposed to uh, an analytical one. Okay, so to better understand the components of, of learning, this movie rating application actually captured the essence of learning from data. And many other such applications exist in different fields. And in order to kind of understand uh, and, and better relate to, to the idea of machine learning, we are going to look at a problem that we will continue looking at throughout the semester, because let's consider that as like some standard problem using which we can define different components of learning and, and relate to different uh, ideas of learning. So that problem is the famous credit approval problem. Okay, so this is like the famous credit approval problem for banks, essentially. So banks have these um, humongous set of applications that come in and they have to decide whether to approve those applications or not, right? A uh, bank receives thousands of credit card applications every day and they want to automate this process because obviously like somebody must be sitting there and trying to scan each of the application and deciding yes or no. But this seems to be a tedious job, especially in today's age uh, when a lot of it can be automated. But this is not a simple problem because there is no formula, as we said, so there is no analytical solution to this problem. I cannot come up with like a simple formula that will tell me, yes, approve this application, yes, reject this application, and so on, right? So there is no magic formula that exists when I think of it in terms of like the max, right? Okay, so just like, just as in the case of movie ratings, banks does not know this analytical solution, whether uh, whether they should approve or reject a particular uh, incoming application. And so they have to come up with a machine learning uh, solution. And this essentially calls for learning from data so that bank can use historical values or historical data of previous customers to figure out some kind of an empirical solution for credit approval. Okay, so the data that usually like, the bank will have is the incoming application will have the age of the applicant, uh, the gender, annual salary, years in residence, years in jobs, current debt, and so on, right? So you can have like other uh, information as well for the incoming um, customer. Now, the important thing here is that all of these are factors. Now we can relate and also kind of bridge the, the same uh, ideas from our movie recommender problem to this problem as well, wherein we can see that we have these factors or these attributes that define an incoming customer, right? So we can define the incoming customer as like the, a vector of all these factors. And then because we have this historical data and we also know that there are like certain customers for which we have approved or not approved applications based on certain criteria, or they have defaulted or not defaulted, and all that data is available to me, right? I have plenty of data. So that data will, will guide me in the construction of a formula or an, an empirical solution for credit approval. And that can be used for future applicants. So in the next video, we are going to talk about like formally writing the components of learning and then trying to put the pieces together, how the components of learning fit in, especially with this problem. 
but the key takeaway from both these examples is that we know that a pattern exists, although we do not know it, but we have data to learn from it, right? So always remember whenever these three fall in that sequence, you know that you can apply machine learning to that particular problem. Both for the Netflix problem and the bank problem, we saw that there was a pattern that existed, right? In terms of the factors. And then we did not know the formula for that, that pattern, right? But we had data to learn from it and we will do that going forward. So let's end this video with these two uh, examples. In the next video, I'm going to talk about um, more formally defining the components of learning.